correct. Uh, uh, am I audible? Yes, you're audible. Okay. Uh, uh, just put a POI in the chats, and I I will I will read it, and my, I will start my speech in three, two, one. In the recent U.S. election in 2020, uh, the progressive uh, the the situation of a mass movement attacking the politicians because of their policies, or regardless of their politics, uh, the, of their policies, has been uh, prevailing. We can see the example of the Black Lives Matter movement and the uh, movements calling for the criminal justice uh, reforms in the United States, calling several prominent Democratic and liberal politicians, such as uh, Vice President-elect Kamala Harris, for their for their for their role in uh, as an Attorney General of California and of, of a huge proponent of law enforcement in the United States, as someone who do not serve the interests of the progressive groups and some kind of a tra traitor for for the for their society we think that uh this uh this situation should not be happening in the context of this motion where in the conservative countries the progressive women's group uh will be refraining from attacking the female politicians regardless of their policies in this debate we argue or we define that conservative countries as countries where the patriarchal structure still exists and strong in its laws, in its community, and its in its power structure of politics. Uh, we define the progressive women's groups as groups that advocate a liberal position for women empowerment, such as the choice for abortions, for equal pay and wage for women, uh, and also works within the, the, the frame of these conservative countries. Uh, what we mean as refrain from attacking those female politicians is that they should abstain from publicly calling out or having a public falling out with with the female politicians uh, serving or uh, in 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 those conservative countries, our goal here is simple. We think that uh, the policies or the goals uh, that are being advocated by the progressive women's group in those conservative countries should should and could be voiced on the same lane with the female politicians that are elected by the people of those countries. Uh, since they share the same goal or the same interest, which is to advocate for a more equal and a, poor, a more prominent understanding, uh, a standing of women in the societies. However, we recognize that the progressive women's group and the female politicians, despite they share the same interests, they have the different role in, in the power uh, structure of those conservative countries. The female politicians uh, are being elected by the people, they're being elected by the electorate, while the progressive women's groups uh, serve for the narrow interests of those uh, society or community that they serve and they advocate. Uh, despite sharing the same interests, they works and they uh, manufacture the, the, the power structure in, in an entirely different way. But we think this is either the question of whether the end justify the mean. We think that by refraining the attacking the female politicians, regardless of their policies, the progressive women's group can uh, urgently recognize that this is a situation of mutual understanding. The role of female politicians, even in a conservative country where women or, or female politicians often play um, a little role in governance, they still have the enough power for for uh, advocating agendas that are, are being advocated by the progressive women groups. Politicians, uh, you like it or not, make or change the laws. The mass movement in, in, the, in, the, other, in, in, in the other way, they uh, enlighten or advocate for change using methods of protests, methods of demonstrations, methods of uh, street demonstrations and uh, things like that. And this is where we came into our urgency. We think that by not attacking those female politicians, the progressive women's group could be better achieving their uh, uh, advocated interest, uh, which is for a more equal and uh, respected position for women empowerment in these conservative countries. We would like to bring the uh, comparing the situation with the uh, civil rights movement in the United States in the 1960s. When Dr. Martin Luther King uh, and the leaders of the Southern Conference 
in the 1960s advocates for for the voting rights for fair uh, pay and for housing rights for African Americans in the United States. The United States is largely a very uh, conservative society dominated by uh, the uh, the white uh, supremacist society in the South. But in this, even in this era, the strategy uh, applied by Dr. King was uh, to advocate for their agendas publicly as, as, a, as a progressive movement in the streets, proven by the march to Washington and all that. But also, they do not uh, publicly attack politicians uh, that are sympathetic to their case. They uh, prefer to sort out their disagreements with politicians like Lyndon Johnson and Robert F. Kennedy in private. They do not publicly call out liberal Democrats in Congress uh, uh, who does not uh, satisfactorily supporting the causes of the African Americans, but they sort out those disagreements in, in, in private, in private conferences. Uh, but in public, they have uh, the, uh, uh, the compromise that they will not be attacking those politicians because the civil rights movement recognized that those uh, uh, politicians are beneficial for, for, for the cause of the civil rights movements and that at the end of the day, those politicians are the ones who uh, uh, can change or enact new laws that could be uh, advocating the agendas brought by the civil rights movement. In this case, uh, we think that this is comparable to situation faced by the progressive women's groups and female politicians in the conservative countries where they have to work uh, with each other and to uh, advocate for the same position using the role and power given by them in these conservative countries where patriarchal society reigns. And that at the end of the day, uh, we, think, we think that the end does justify the mean and if that mean means that uh, they should re be refraining from attacking each other in, in the question of policies and agendas, we think that is the right thing to do. And on that point, uh, we are proud to uh, propose. Thank you. Okay, I thank the Prime Minister for that speech and I welcome the Leader of Opposition to present their Uh, am I being audible? Speech and I welcome the Deputy Prime Minister. Check, check. Am I audible? Yes, you're audible. Um, my preferred POI method is just uh, chat me through the chat. And if I accept you, I will let you. And don't forget to put your, your position or your bench. And if I, uh, if I ignore you, means that I did not accept your POI. I'll start my speech in three, two, one. Chamber, we believe that the opening of prisons of the house is the one that actually against the idea of feminism itself here. Why so? Because we believe that at the end, under the side of the opening of positions, we don't see that uh, the way on how our agenda as a progressive women group will be achieved. Because at the end, what happened under their side is chaos. What happened under their side, what will happen under their side is that there will be such a disunity among the, among the progressive women's group. And therefore, uh, they, they, they actually will only failing the agenda of our groups or as the feminists itself. Before jumping into my substantive, separate rebuttals for the opening positions of the house. Firstly, they believe that uh, this uh, refraining from taking from politicians will eventually uh, degrading the woman merit by proving that actually women uh, attacking this politician means that uh, those female politicians were actually affected by their merit. But we say no, there will be no such a degraded, degrading value just because we are refraining from attacking these female politicians. Because at the end, we believe that society will can, the society can value by themselves. Society have the ability to value whether these female are actually uh, elected by their merit because of their ability or not. And we believe that such a such a degrading uh, woman merit with ourselves as re to refraining 
from attacking this competition did not have any correlation at all because we believe that just because uh, we did not criticize or attacking publicly b b to this woman doesn't mean that we doesn't mean that these women are actually having such a bad ability in politics the fact that they are elected means that they have the the ability or the skills needed to be politicians remember this uh, this is a conservative country means that their uh, their burden to win an elections is even harder than the men in which that if they can win in a conservative country means that their ability is really really trusted by the society even the patriarchal society approve those women skills and then the opening position claim that uh, female politicians in the conservative countries are not representing the feminist uh, feminist ideology itself but we we say uh, the thing is when you are a woman in a conservative country the moment you are work uh, you you have the courage to work for the pol politics itself means that you already have the spirit of feminism itself gentlemen why because in in a, in a conservative country where where the patriarchal value still strong which uh, we believe that in the patriarchal society the value of women is a value less than men women are not meant to go to the politics women are not meant to be uh, to working outside however these female politicians by working into the politics or uh, uh, walking into the the path that actually hard for women in conservative countries is already the proof that actually they have uh, at least they have the spirit of the feminist movement in which we believe that the to empower women to prove that women are actually not uh, as how the patriarchal society believe therefore the claim the film politicians just a clone is something that relevant coming from the opening oppositions and then they also believe that the society will not uh, shutting us down because even if we speak up or attacking these female politicians but the thing is that we believe that the, the harm is not coming from the society but the harm will come to our movement itself it will uh, degrading our movement by this unite uh, among the members of movement itself and then here uh, before the jump to my substance i would like to remind that on how my prime minister have explained to you about the importance of unity in terms of fighting a very strong enemy we believe that we have to unite and in this case our strong enemy is a is a conservative countries with their conservative society in which the patriarchal value is still high and is still very strong uh, remember on how our ancestor gained a uh, fight for the independence of indonesia we are actually uniting first before we can gain our independence what happened when we work uh, separately and we attacking each other we fail our agenda to get the independence when we start when we started to work together we believe that the independency uh, comes uh, easier than we fight along same case with this uh, feminist agenda we believe that in the conservative country with a very strong opponent which is the conservative patriarchal society there is no choice unless we have to uh, unite and combine our power with who with the people that have power in the in the politics in this case this this female uh, these female politicians why we choose these female politicians because we believe that these people are sharing the same agenda as as us as a feminist movement which is the empowerment of the empowerment of the woman itself and then we believe that attacking them directly will only harming our agenda why because we believe that it will create such a disunity from the politician and the social movement itself we believe that the social movement cannot stand alone cannot fight alone to win our agenda which is the woman empowerment and then we believe that these politicians are the one that actually have the power to change the at least they, they have the power to change the policy inside the government itself if we attacking them directly Hello. You were muted for a little bit. Just go back about thirty seconds. I paused your time. Okay. Uh, check check. Is it me or okay? Yeah, you were muted for uh, most people, I think. And wait. I'll just start whenever you start talking again. Okay, wait, wait. Uh, where, where is that when, uh, what is the last thing that I said that you got? So, the well, the last thing on my notes isn't the last thing that you said. So I, ju I just for a blanket thing, 
for everyone. Uh, just go back 30 seconds, about 30 seconds from uh, your where you are right. Okay, okay. And here we believe that uh, uh, in in fighting in the conservative uh, countries, we believe that these politicians are actually important for us as a as a as a progressive movement. Why? Because we believe that in in fighting the patriarchal society, we need to have the chance inside the government itself, inside the political itself, inside the policy itself, because we believe that in the current status quo, the policies that in conservative country are more likely to be reserved, to be patriarchal, and we believe that those policies should be changed. Who who have the power to change this uh, policy? We believe that it is only the, this of the politicians that can have that have the power to change that. And uh, we believe that in the current status quo, the politician that have at least uh, shared the same interest as a feminist movement is this female uh, politicians because I'll explain before that the moment they're working into the politics means that they have at least a small amount of uh, feminists. Uh, they share we share the same spirit with those people, and we believe that by attacking directly attacking these people will actually create such a disunity among the femin the progressive woman woman progressive group itself. Why? Because we believe that the moment we attacking them, public will see that actually even among the women. Uh, if even among the women there is such a disunity how can we how can we support such a movement that actually the, that actually uh, discourage their uh, their member uh, in this case this uh, woman pol female politician itself and then we believe that how by refraining ourselves will reach our goal because firstly we believe that the, the those those female politicians are doing their approach in order to gain the uh, in order to reach our a goal in a soft way. Why, we, why I say this is a soft way? Because we believe that in the patriarchal, in the conservative countries, a soft approach is the better uh, is the better solutions to reach our end goal, which is the empowerment of women itself. And we believe that these these female politicians are doing such a soft approach. And we believe that by refraining ourselves to attacking this uh, this female this female politicians will at the end of the day reach our goal which is the important empowerment of the woman itself because we see that the unity will create it and we believe that at the end of the day we will reach our goal therefore okay i thank the deputy prime minister for that speech and i welcome the deputy leader for opposition reminder to time yourself please Leader of Opposition for that speech, and I welcome the Member of Government to open the closing debate. Okay, I'm audible. Yes, you're audible. Okay, my uh, POI preference is just uh, turn on your mic and just... Uh, and turn on your uh, mic. And also, uh, I will start my speech in three, two, one. Madam Chair, we know that the agenda of feminists is to campaign and voice up the equality and women's rights. We know in conservative countries that men still dominant and idea of patriarchy exists like in India, Bangladesh, Pakistan, Saudi Arabia, and so on and so on and so forth. Women face the problem not only about the stereotyping of gender, but also inequality and sexual issue. And also number of women and politicians is so less. So this is why the, the women's problem cannot be solved because in the parliaments, they face the problem of quantity and also facing the attacking from same women and stereotyping of gender itself. We know that in current status quo, we know that conservative countries uh, uh, condition, women still stereotyping as a weak and the opportunities to them being a politician is so narrow. Men uh, still have a dominant in politics. It's hard for women to take a part because the stigma of conservative society that politics is only for men. So because of this, we need to support female politicians in conservative countries. Women need a res representative to voice up the equality in legislative, for example. So they need a female politician to represent them. So having a female politi uh, so we need to have a female politician to represent our voice. And also, our uh, closing government coming with stance to refrain attack of female politician by other progressive women and we have a goals to achieve the idea of women supporting women 
second one we uh, and supporting the woman and refrain from attacking them regardless the policy in conservative country and also to keep sending women in congress and make them secure their position and to inspire of, uh, other women and female children and stuff so what make us different uh, with our opening the first one opening cannot explain what is current problem in status quo in conservative countries regarding gender issue and the second one they cannot explain to us why women represent in politics is so important and the third they cannot tell to us the purpose of feminist movement especially idea of women supporting women so rebuttals the first one the closing uh, the uh, opening opposition told to us about the object objectivity we know we think that is not kind of object uh, objective thing to attack uh, the female politician regardless their policy just because they create a policy and you dis disagree about that about that and it make you justify to attack them no it's it not only harm to you and but also to politician itself that, that you that represent you you will lose the represent for example that raise your voice uh, and voice up your right itself and also and also that uh, they told to us that stereotype stereotype in politician we think it's not true we know that in conservative uh, conservative uh, countries there is no woman being a tool to win the election why because we know that gender stereotype is excess and too risky to them sir, to, before uh, six, sir. Uh, to do that yeah. and also no thanks and also even if so they can be independent without political parties right so we think that the, the idea of stereotype is sir. cannot be sense and also they told to us about justification to keep the equality and public will lose interest of feminists we think it's not true and we think it's backlashing with idea that i will uh, explain in my point the first one we we will bring the idea of women supporting women women being politician is is a kind thing of achievement especially in conservative countries the agenda of feminist movement is to struggle for their rights idea of women support uh, each other and be grateful as a woman so we think that seeing other women achieve the important position especially in area that stereotype of gender is exist uh, is one of achievement and we need to support them that we know that women need a re woman representative especially in a conservative countries that women right is is lack and their face inequality and so on and so forth so women voice will be listened and same women will understand their problem because there are same women right and also that even you are disagree with the policy they made for example legalized abortion legalized marriage or even polygamy that backlashing with uh, idea of pro progressive feminists we think that you cannot justify the attack them because they dare to raise up your voice and fight for your right because there are many things that they need to raise uh, need to fight things you're right for and also that why we need women in politics because we know that in conservative countries right women with men is not equal there are patriarchy uh, uh patriarchy idea for example in india and also the stigma about women is about misogyny they face sexual assault less right inequality and so on and so forth for example in india pakistan arab bangladesh and other conservative countries so women why we we need a woman in politics because women have harder time winning election than men do right because they ha already have a less number of women in president or leader in conservative countries right and also that woman candidate face more obstacle running office than men itself especially in uh, in a conservative countries because we know that women face a voters who have a gender stereotype especially in a uh, conservative country they already struggling for win at the very first beginning because of that and also that we need more women in parliaments and as a political because politics concerns women as much as it does men to achieve full gender equality in our society politics must serve as an example for example women belong in leadership position because we cannot afford to forget the skills and competence of the female half of our population so because of struggling it's justified to us to not attack them but we need uh, to support them so we think that despite of policies uh, policy, uh, policies they made we still need to support them and refrain from attacking them for example in bangladesh when benazir bhutto leadership and participate in policy making make a real difference in the lives of women on the ground right and change the role inside of legislative so this is we it's important and need uh, and we need a uh, we need a uh, represent to to raise up our voice in legislative uh, legislative uh, part and also why we think by attacking uh, other women it's so bad because we know that op uh, it will opposing the value of feminism itself and the second one it will stop the opportunity female in politics 
why we think that by attacking them, it will spread this stereotype to society that women are already failure to rule uh, to rule the country, for example. And also, it will create the stigma to our next generation will afraid uh, to take a part in the future because we they think it will too risky because they will be impeached by Congress, for example. And vice versa, we need to doctrine to our kids, especially female kids. They have they have a same chance of like like men they have a, uh, and also they have a supporter if you want to uh, to represent your your uh, your woman for the sake of purpose of feminist in future itself and also uh, so because of that we know that there is no justification by attacking female politicians just because reg uh, policies they met because in conservative countries we know that the, uh, we know that the uh, the a woman is being a politician or rules the country is a one of achievement. So they already uh, reached the goals, the goals of feminists to raise, uh, raise, raise up the and also the voice up and also rise up the voice uh, and right of the woman itself. So because of that, why we think we can win in this debate. Thank you. I thank the member of government for that speech and I welcome the member of opposition. Am I audible? Yes. All right. Uh, for POI, please uh, open your microphone and say it loud and clear. Uh, and for my speech, I will start in three, two, one panels. For this debate, uh, we, uh, we can see it clearly that the government team doesn't exactly know what are they talking about and what are they really uh, about, uh, what is feminism really about. Uh, uh, this can be seen in, as why we are better from opening government. Opening government doesn't understand what is feminism at core. They don't uh, really understand that uh, feminism is equality and uh, this applies to, to the closing government in which the opening government uh, Opening government say that a female politician uh, doesn't have the same accountability. Meanwhile, female politicians have the same accountability and obligation with male politician to help the cause of progressive women's group. And just because a politician is female, it doesn't mean she is a part of progressive women's group, uh, true and true. Uh, this can be seen in some part of my arguments uh, in which I will say about Puan Maharani and the case of um, Omnibus Law. And, for opening of government, uh, uh, they don't acknowledge that female politicians don't only follow the needs of women and progressive women groups because they have to fulfill their obligation towards political party that represented by them too. Uh, Meanwhile, the opening opposition say that, uh, explain that uh, Juan Maharani is actually the puppet of P uh, PDI. We are not talking about that. We are saying that uh, they actually have many obligations and one of their obligations is not only towards the voters, but also towards the people they represented. Uh, in this case is the political party. And uh, as, I, as uh, opening up the said, the policy that will be brought by femi femi female politicians can also worsen the status quo, status quo behind how patriarchy is accepted as normal in concerted conservative political culture. Meanwhile, uh, why we are better than opening opposition, it is because we understand how much we will attack the female politician. Uh, the closing opposition actually understand the mechanism and how that mechanism will ev eventually uh, make a change towards the better for the female progressive movement, uh, progressive women's group. And what, even though opening opposition explain how abortion rights are being held by the power and moral obligation of progressive women's group are needed to fulfill that right, they don't explain at all how it is urgent and how it is he, how it is effective that attack will be able to change how female politicians make the policies and how the policies will uh, will be in line with the with the uh, the need of the progressive women's groups. Our mechanism, meanwhile, is that uh, what we are will we will be attacking them in form of not only calling them out but also canceling them and not voting for them. Uh, 
uh, why we are calling them out and canceling them. Uh, we are calling them out and canceling them in in term of we are we uh, we publicly say that we are not part we are not uh, we are not a part that will accept the idea of uh, only will accept the idea of only uh, female female politician but also the, we need to accept that uh, female politician who are into our interest um, meanwhile we under, uh, other other reason why we are better than opening opposition is because we understand the job as voter in which progressive woman group has the power to not vote and therefore stop the patriarchal female politician from being elected and because of that we understand that our mechanism will uh, do better than uh, the mechanism that has no uh, has no base in opening opposition. Meanwhile, for causing government, we are better than them because we acknowledge that male politician can also be someone who represents progressive women group because male politician might have the same point and interest that women groups has. The idea that only women has the equal interest of uh, equal interest with the uh, progressive women's group is only a stereotyping of member of government himself. Uh, and they say that uh, calling out uh, the mechanism that uh, opening up the open the opposition is bringing is actually making women uh, not being voted and women will be less being heard and there will be no representative but this is the problem here calling out or counseling is not equal with making women not being voted of course i'm saying that mechanism one of the mechanism is not voting for them but uh, seeing that not voting for them is actually voting for the second the second term it actually can be uh, can be seen that maybe not only not only one female not only one female that will be not voted but uh, uh, but there will be other females that will be voted and because of that uh, there will be still fem uh, female uh, politician that will be representing a woman and there uh, and causing government doesn't explain what failure they are actually talking about and that's my uh, my comparison with with closing government that is a part of my rebuttal too next i will jump to my uh, arguments in which my argument is about female politician will also have their check and balance through progressive women's group this idea in which prog uh, check and balance through progressive women's group uh, ex uh, can be seen that uh, because female politicians will learn and see what is the important thing for other women and they will be more interested in fulfilling the women's and the, and the progressive women's interest. It, this is different than what opening opposition is saying because what I am saying is uh, the female politician will be uh, able to will be able to change their mind and because of that uh, female politician will be able to uh, recondition themselves and to uh, pass the legal quality of uh, RUU, maybe PKS or RUU that will help uh, women to go through their lives. For the example, the condition of Puan Maharani versus adult female DPR, DPR, uh, DPR part. Upon Maharani literally support omnibus law that hurt women in which there will be no menstruation leave and no less maternity leave. These hurt women who are mothers and not mom. Meanwhile, uh, other female DPR doesn't do that. And because of that, we can see that one Maharani is not a part of uh, this female politician. And we, uh, op we propose to, uh, to attack politicians. Thank you. Okay, I thank the member of opposition for that speech and I welcome the government whip to close the case government. Hello, am I audible? Yes, you're up. Okay, I will start my speech in three, two, one. Panels, the only team that can win this event is the team that can prove that whether from the attacking female politician or different uh, attacking female politician wouldn't 
uh, wouldn't uh, give harm to the progressive women in the conservative countries. In here, we as the closing government, we already explained to you why it is justified for us to refrain from attacking female politicians regardless of their policies. Because we already, uh, my member already explained to you at the very beginning that's why it is so important for us to have the uh, female pol policy, uh, female politician in the Congress. And also, we already explained to you what is uh, why it is uh, so. Uh, difficult for us to send women to Congress, like because they have uh, they uh, face a lot of struggle at uh, at the very beginning. Like like uh, in a conservative uh, countries, uh, the polit the political parties are on politicians are dominated by male, and also women have a harder time in the election from men do because uh, if what whole gender stereotype, for example, and also uh, they have uh, many obstacles uh winning uh, uh running for office uh of, of uh, for office then in here the closing opposition come with the idea we want uh, to attack uh, female politicians regardless of their policies because uh we have we want to be objective and also uh we want uh, uh sometimes they their policies is not in line with the progressive men's uh, group and that's why we have to stop voting for them or, or canceling that here we uh the the opposition side of the house seems to uh doesn't know how the how we as the uh, women's group struggling to send our representative which is female uh in the congress and and we as the pro, uh, progressive women's uh, group our goal is we want to uh, we don't want to cause things that will stop women to represent in the political party and also in the congress and here we as the uh, uh, causing government, we uh, explain to you why it is so harmful when we are attacking a female politician regardless of their policy. The first one uh, is as the as the no thank you. The first first one is as the progressive women. Uh, the only thing that one we want is we want to fight for our equality and uh, uh and one way uh, to show that uh, is we want uh, a represent in the Congress, right? When even though they are policies is not uh, in line with our goals at least we already show to the world to the people that are, we are able to send our representative to the congress it means that we can fight uh, men and as well and men. also we have the same equality as men uh, that uh, that uh, that we are able to send uh, our female representative to the congress no thank you and also in here they have uh, they have the example of puan maharani but we say we couldn't uh, couldn't just buy the argument about puan maharani because of because we think that indonesia is already progressive now indonesia is not that conservative country this is proven by a lot of people a lot of female already uh, joining political parties even one of the female which is megawati already elected as the president few years ago right so this kind of case wouldn't be happen in a uh, in a um, uh, indonesia or we cannot apply this motion in indonesia in here we uh, show uh, we have one uh, what kind of conservative countries that we are talking about? For example, is uh, countries like Bangladesh, countries like uh, 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 Saudi Arabia, and etc. Where they are still conservative countries that they are uh, they have a stereotype that every woman is a weak and they are not um, uh, able uh, to to be a leader. They are not able to be uh, to be um, uh, to to sit in the political congress. Right in here, we as the woman, uh, when uh, when we already have uh, our representative in the Congress, the only thing that we want to do is we want to secure their position. We want to support them no matter what happened because they already represent us. They already give us uh, showing that the opportunity opportunity to all uh, to other female to other female children uh, 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 children right. Uh, for example, in the Bangladesh, with the movement actors, with the female politician leadership have gained, uh, they have gained significant advantages in attaining gender justice by uh, challenging uh, gender discrimination in political, uh, social, and economic sphere. Uh, the state has significantly reduced ma maternal mortality and poverty gain, and uh, also gender parity uh, in primary and secondary education. And also, they already ensure women's representation through gender quotas in the national and local government. Even though at the first time in the worst case uh, scenario, even though the film presentation that we are supporting is not uh, uh, in line with our uh, poli uh, make the policies that are not in line uh, with our agenda yet, 
why we still have to support them because we believe that by securing the position at that we have we already make uh, opportunities to another female uh, to be in that position right or uh, uh, imagine that if we are attacking the uh, female politician what will uh, another female see right they will be afraid to jump into the politi uh, politics because they believe that if i ever make mistakes and then another woman will uh, attack me uh, and etc it will also uh, make uh, the, the female children too scared to jump uh, the poli uh, politic later because they have this kind of stigma in their mind right uh, no matter what happened when i'm uh, even though i'm struggling or uh, fighting for the right of my 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 uh, another female uh, they were still going to attack me when i'm uh, doing the mistake right that's why we think that when uh, we are attacking female politicians regardless of their policies it will just bring a lot of harm to our progressive women uh, communities in here why we think that uh their uh, their argument which is they want to remain objective they want uh they want to attack them because they see that uh this they deserve it even though you want to remain objective but as the feminist people as the group of people that want to achieve the gender equality itself at the very beginning the only thing that you have to do is you have to secure the position of your representative in the congress and also you have to support them no matter what happened because uh they there are the one that will uh, show uh, the world that uh, women also have the possibility uh, to to sit in the Congress itself, and also uh, later by now they will uh, help you to voice your uh, mind to fight for uh, the female itself because we believe that a uh, woman uh, is uh, the one that know another woman better, and this kind of policies that like uh, the policies that harming the. Uh, female rights will be attacking by them at the end of the day because uh, they already have power uh, so they can voice out their mind in the congress and etc that's why when we are attacking female politician legal uh politician it will just uh harm uh, harm hampering our uh, agenda of the as uh, the progressive women group and we as the closing government we want to refrain ourselves from attacking a female politician because we want we don't want to cause things that will stop women represent in the congress because of that we as the closing government we uh propose this motion thank you I thank the government whip for that speech, and I welcome the opposition whip to close this debate. Okay, am I audible? Yes, you're audible. Okay. So you can give your POI through um, opening your microphone and directly speaking, and I will start my speech in three, two, one. Ladies and gentlemen, the question in this the questions in this debate can be narrowed down to two questions, which are: How can we achieve progress with our feminist movement through female politicians and Will we cause harm towards women as feminist groups by attacking these female politicians? So OG tries to answer this question by explaining that patriarchal structures still exist strongly in conservative countries, including in politics, and that uh, feminism means we want to empower women, and that by refraining from attacking, we refrain from calling them out, we refrain from calling out female politicians. And they also compared uh, the situation to the 1960s civil rights movement, where we don't publicly call out politicians, but we talk in private, sort out our disagreements in private conferences. But we think that this isn't comparable as back then, civil rights was a movement which includes protest. Now, isn't protest, uh, doesn't it count as a form of attack? And therefore, we think that this argument is quite illogical as civil rights movement also in a way attack the politicians, even if they discuss their agenda in private. Therefore, we do not think OG answered this question very well. But that argument aside, we as a whole think that OG does not seem to understand feminism. We have already defined it uh, as a movement that fights for female equal rights to have an equal standing as men. Of course, empowerment is part of the process to make sure that women have the same rights as men, but we cannot forget that we will also have the same obligation. That means that feminism doesn't want special treatment for women, but equal rights, therefore equal obligations, including uh, the obligation of being called out if they act problematic or they act against some new values. This means that it's fine to call them out, to cancel them if they do not change for the better, uh, in this case, to support feminist values like anti-abortion, support queer women, etc. But of course, we limit these attacks as to not degrade them. We do not call them names such as whores, sluts, etc. Because we are a feminist movement and we know better than to use those words against fellow women. So even if you are a woman in politics, you still have accountability, and that accountability is what we put into question to make sure that you stay in line, that you don't act as you will in the name of 
I'm a woman. I can do no wrong, so don't cancel me. And open opposition also tries to answer this question by saying that women in politics become puppets of politics and cannot represent women's aspirations. Therefore, we can attack them, uh, call them out publicly because it's justified. They also explain that their parameters of attacking women in politics. But we, as opposing opposition, are better than them, as my first speaker has already explained, because we understand how we will attack them, how it will make a change, make progress to achieve our feminist goal. We also explain how urgent it is to attack them, to call them out, because it is important that these women know what their problematic behavior is, so that they could educate themselves to become better as soon as possible. Our mechanism is, is also better, because we explain that we, as feminist groups, can become voters that have the power to actually change how feminist politics uh, can be, as we choose the ones that we want to actually represent women. And closing governments have a slight slightly better grasp on feminism and also try to answer this question, but we think that their answer is insufficient as they want to achieve the goal of women supporting women, women empowering women. But what if this relationship is one-sided? We have the feminist movement group support these politicians, but uh, what if they support conservative traditional views that further oppress women? It's kind of funny to imagine that we would support someone who passes laws that limit women in the workforce, taking away basic rights for women that will otherwise make them equal to men. And closing government also thinks it is much more important to have any woman at all in politics, which I will explain to you in my classes, just how problematic this point of view is. And while we do, we do want more women in politics, we think this does not answer the question of making progress for feminism or equal female rights if we have just any woman in politics. We, the, uh, closing opposition answers this question the best because we understand feminism much better. We actually explain the mechanism in which we attack these politicians such as abstaining from voting them in favor, in favor of a more feminist politician. And through these clashes, you will see how harmful it is to blindly support women in politics without asking for accountability from them if they act problematic in the name of being united with fellow women. So moving on to the first part of this debate, the opening uh, government said that female politicians might, uh, that uh, we want to support female politicians, but we have to consider that these female politicians might also be conservative, that not all of them might share the same interests as liberal women, since these women can come from conservative parties, can be part of them. Therefore, we do not think that we can lump these female politicians as one girl power icon in, po in politics. They can have different values, even polar opposite values from us the feminist group. The example is, as explained by opening and also closing opposition, uh, is Juan Maharani, who supported omnibus law, laws which limit and oppress female workers just as much as they oppress male workers. It is justified then for us to call her out for joining the rest of the DPR who support these inhumane laws. The second clash is that they try to claim we, the opposition team, are actually not feminist because we allow this calling out, degrading these women and causing chaos, where the politicians wouldn't be able to achieve feminist goals. We are not degrading the women through calling them out. We are making them take accountability through their actions. We, the feminist group, want women to be equal to men. Therefore, we have the same obligations and rights as men. That means women are not treated specially they, just because of their gender. Even in conservative countries, they have the same obligation to fight for women's rights. So if they do not, we have the right as a feminist movement to demand that they do better, demand through calling them out, canceling them if they are against feminist movements and abstaining from voting them because why vote for someone whose values are polar opposite to ours just because she's a woman? And third clash is when opposition government also says that this will not create unity, but say through these attacks, calling them out and demanding that they better do better for men is better than some false sense of unity or like kumbaya between women just for the sake of being seen as a united force. Why be united with women who aren't for feminist views, who are problematic. So we just like throw away our values in the name of appearing nice to the fellow women and be friendly with them who do nothing to help women. And then the fourth clash is when closing government said that we need women in politics. But this is uh, such a narrow view on feminism as I have briefly explained before. We do need women in more fields of work, especially in politics where they would theoretically have more power and influence so we can achieve more laws that support women. However, more women in politics we still do not guarantee that these women will be feminist, as we've explained over and over again, that they could have polar opposite values from actual feminists and therefore they need to be called out, they need to be educated further, they need to actually be women in politics that support women and equal rights for women. 
but we cannot just be happy with simply having women in politics. And the final clash is that they say that calling out female politicians will make more women and girls afraid to start to become politicians. But here we say that this won't happen because the women and girls that we want in politics anyways are women and girls who would want what is best for women, what will further equal rights for women, and they would want to be called out if they stay from this role. We think that these women and girls will know better as well than to be afraid from being called out or canceled because we think it will make them aspire more to make the political scene better uh, with what they believe in. And that is why we, the opposition, close to opposition, are still proud to oppose. Okay, I think the opposition whip for that speech. And with that being said, that's the end of the quarterfinals, um, novice quarterfinals. So if everyone could, because this is silent and we'll announce it in the big chamber, if everyone could just leave the room, everyone except the judge, that the judges can use this room to deliberate. All right, thank you everyone.